Did you know that humpback whales don't eat during their winter migration? That salmon almost always return to the same river where they were born to spawn? Or that leatherback sea turtles can travel over 10,000 miles each year? If you didn't, you're welcome for the new facts to add to your trivia arsenal. But how did we figure out these stats in the first place? Animal tracking, of course. When scientists track animals on land, they can use the same technology that allows us to send a text, doom scroll on Instagram, or keep tabs on our Uber Eats delivery. Things get a little more complicated if the animal you want to track is underwater. Just try making a call or using your phone's GPS in the pool and you'll see what I mean. So, how do marine scientists do it? In this video, we will learn how scientists like her and her and him use a research tool called biotelemetry to track aquatic animals and uncover the details of their secret underwater lives. Plus, we'll even show you where you can explore real-time tracking data and see what animals may be close by. If you enjoy Waterless videos and want to support us to make more, check out our gear at waterless.com. We specialize in environmentally responsible UV protective clothing that is perfect for a long day of field work or just hanging out at the beach. Our designs are inspired by marine animals in need of help, including many that are tracked using biotelemetry. And we donate 10% of profits to organizations working directly to protect these threatened species. As a small family owned and operated business, your support means the world to us. Okay, raise your hand if I lost you earlier at biotelemetry. Let's break it down before diving in. Biotelemetry is a method of collecting data on free-roaming animals remotely. In other words, scientists can observe wild marine animals in their natural habitat without actually being there. The trick? Tagging. Scientists attach specialized tags to the animals they want to study with the utmost care and consideration for the animal's health and safety. As they swim around, the sensors in these tags record things like the animal's location, motion, and information about the water it's swimming in before transmitting it wirelessly back to the scientist. The information these tags collect is helping answer questions like, where is the species spending most of its time? Is it interacting with other animals? It can even reveal how humans may be impacting them. Just ask Mitch. Dr. Mitchell Ryder studies the movement and habitat use of sea turtles and sharks in the Western Atlantic Ocean. He was recently part of a research team investigating the movement of sharks around coastal urban centers like Miami, Florida. The specialized tags the teams used to collect the data for this study are called acoustic tags. Acoustic tags work by emitting ultrasonic acoustic signals that can travel through water and are then picked up by a receiver. These underwater receivers are constantly listening for the ping of an acoustic tag. And since each tag has its own unique signal, the receiver knows exactly which tag shark is swimming by. Mitch strategically installed a bunch of receivers throughout Miami's Biscayne Bay to create an array of listening stations, constantly recording tag pings over a large area for many months. The receivers store all this data internally, but since satellite signals don't travel through water, the team has to manually download the data from each receiver before they can map out movement and analyze behavior. Many researchers worldwide have set up similar receiver arrays in their own local study areas, but together, they create a large network of receivers that can reveal movement across whole coastlines. But there aren't receivers in the whole ocean. How do you track an animal that spends most of its time in the open ocean, nowhere near coastlines or acoustic arrays? Let's ask her. This is Chelsea. She uses satellite tags to identify habitat use and migration routes of highly migratory shark species. Hold on, didn't she say earlier that satellite doesn't work underwater? Well, yes, I did say that, and it's still true. That's why scientists like Chelsea must be very selective about which species to give a satellite tag. Most satellite tags are only used on species known to come to the surface at some point. This is because for a satellite tag to work, its antenna has to break the surface of the water so that it can communicate with an overhead satellite, record a position, and transmit data directly to an online database that scientists can access remotely. Chelsea takes all of these real-time location pings from the sharks she's tagged and maps the movement of each shark to reveal migration routes, habitat choice, even identify special areas that are important to a bunch of different marine species. But this data isn't for scientists' eyes only. You can check out where these satellite-tagged animals are going for yourself. Organizations like the Sea Turtle Conservancy have interactive maps that you can explore online and see where your favorite marine animals are going, and even see if any are near you right now. 
As we only begin to understand how climate change will affect our world, scientists are already seeing evidence that warming oceans are altering the movement and migration routes of marine animals. Some parts of the oceans are becoming uninhabitable, and animals that can move are leaving, while other areas that were once too cold for many species are warming to just the right temperature, like finally installing that heater in your pool so you can enjoy it year-round. These habitat shifts show that pairing tracking data with oceanographic data, like temperature, currents, and light, is going to be really important for future conservation efforts as areas that require protection today may move somewhere else sooner than later. A lot of the ocean data scientists use are actually collected high above the Earth by satellites. By remotely sensing from their orbit, satellites can provide us with way more information than we could possibly obtain solely from the surface, like the sea surface temperatures of the whole Earth. But it also comes with limitations, like the resolution and quality of the data, and its ability to observe deep and remote ocean areas. What if you could track an animal and get super high resolution ocean data at the exact same time? That is precisely what Dr. Laura McDonnell wants to explore. Laura is an interdisciplinary marine scientist exploring the idea of sharks as the next legion of oceanographers. Recently, Laura tagged blue and shortfin mako sharks with custom-made satellite tags outfitted with sensors that measure depth and temperature. While below the surface, these sharks are collecting a ton of data on the 3D environment around them that would be extremely difficult and expensive for us to measure otherwise. Then, when these ocean explorers break the surface of the water, their special satellite tag records their current location while simultaneously transmitting all of the ocean data it collected just by swimming around. Flora hopes that her shark oceanographers not only help us understand the movement of highly endangered animals, but will also enhance the accuracy of climate models. There are so many discoveries that tracking will uncover about the hidden lies of marine animals and the complex ocean systems they are a part of. But biotelemetry's impact will go far beyond knowledge for knowledge's sake. Without understanding where these animals go, why they go there, how they use different habitats, and ultimately how all of it may shift as our climate continues to change, we will not be able to effectively protect them. Biotelemetry will be an important research tool for scientists like Mitch, Chelsea, and Laura to create knowledge that we can put into action to better predict, mitigate, and adapt to the effects of climate change on our oceans and our communities.